All right, we're cooking here in just one minute. Hang tight and we're gonna be going here in just a second. If you all can hear me okay, can you let me know? We're streaming on Facebook and on YouTube. We've just learned how to do this, so I'm totally excited to do it. This is Kim, Kim Claver. I start here in like 30 seconds. My partner in crime, I oh, can hear you. Oh, good, good. And can you see, I wanna do the screen share too here. Let me get that cooking. Yeah, okay, good. Can you all see the screen there? Draw a line across your page like this. Let's see if you could tell me if you can see that and I'll, I will know that you can. Hey, Greg. Hey, Penny. Hey, Penny, do you see Brooke around you by any chance? I'm going to see if I can connect with her. My partner, Vic, says she has no power. Oh, good. I may need to make her a panelist. Of course, I don't know how to do that, but that'll be good. Hey, Mike. Good to see you. On the, what you want to do when you guys get in the chat, this is Kim. When you get into the chat, look, the little box, there's a little box that says two, and then you type stuff in. Right where you type stuff in, where it says two, it's going to say host and panelist, or it's going to say everyone. Would you make that set to everyone? That way, everybody can enjoy your comments. Everybody wants to know what you're thinking, and I surely want to know what you're thinking. Okay, so let me let um, Brooke know, because there's a big windstorm out here in the West Coast. There's one out here, right here in front of my ocean, and the sand looks like, you know, something from Lawrence of Arabia, where it gets really, you know, it blows. It's always smooth because they rake it every day, but when it's windy, it, has, it looks like the ocean. The sand looks like the ocean. Okay, let me see if I can get, while you're getting ready here, this is the show we're going to do right here, the one thing. Six inches of snow, great. This is the one thing, I want to teach you the one thing here, which I promise you is not going to be something that you figured you would hear about today. But right now I want you to get a piece of paper and do this, draw a line on a piece of paper. So maybe like six inches of line, that would be good. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can get Brooke on as host in case. On case, if not, we will just run the show as well as we can, like a one arm paper hanger or something like that. I think there's a, an expression like that. Okay, Penny, cool. All right, so we have folks, are you all there? Oh, aren't you sweet? You are totally, you guys are so good. Yeah, okay, so we have folks in the chat, you can hear. Well, we should be ready to go here and I will Get your, everybody have a piece of paper? Cause I'm gonna, I wanna see what these are. Oh yeah, oh, she says, yeah, if I don't have to do video, right. Uh, okay, I can do that, yeah, totally. It's just really to respond to people. I am chatting right now with somebody who is not usually a co-host on these because my co-host is stuck in a windstorm. And so she says she, you know, she really hasn't gotten out of bed yet. And so can she come and help me host? That is, you know, answer your questions without seeing her. But I think we can let her do that. Don't you guys think so? Do you think yes? We Should we say yes? Uh, you can come on and help us. Okay. So why don't we get cooking here? We're ready to go. Everybody have your piece of paper and your that little thing that I'm going to give you there. Because I'm here to tell you, it's not going to be what you expect. So fun. Okay. Seven new messages. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's windy every, everywhere. Okay. All right. Let me see. If, if, I, if I can see you, Brooke, I will make you a, uh, I'll make you a co-host. If I can't see you, then I won't because there's nothing I can, I can do here. Let's see. Panelists, nope, I don't see you there yet. Okay, well, we'll just see what we can do by ourselves. And if we totally screwed up, we'll, y'all can help us. How's that? She's here. You're here. Okay, so 
let's see if I can make you something. You're an attendee here, wait one second. And then I can allow to talk more here, hang on. Promote to panelists. Okay, honey, you are promoted to a panelist. Let me know if you can, if that works for you. I can't hear you yet. I don't need to see you. Oh, we all hi know. there. We all know how darling you look. Hi, I yes. I was not um, expecting this. Yeah, I'm going to do a little show for people, which is going to surprise some folks. And Vicky has a big windstorm. We have a windstorm. So, all right, you guys, are you ready to rock and roll? I bet you anything, Brooke has her page done. Okay, this is Kim, Kim Claver, And we're going to see if we can run this maybe 30 minutes or so. And at the end of 30 minutes, there's going to be a couple of things that you're going to know that you didn't know before that will, I think, help you. Oh, wait, let me get my image so that we can at least see something here. See if I can, if you can see me or not. There, can you see me okay? Tell me yes if you can. Sure can. You can. Oh, goody, goody. Okay. What, what I want to, to help you do is how many of you would say that right now you kind of know what to do to build your business? You know, you got to like get people into it, right? You got to get customers. You got to get recruits. Am I right? We kind of got this. But you're not doing the thing that you that you probably know you should be doing. Is that right? Yes or no? I mean, let's be all grown up for just a minute and sober. You know that to make a business like this work, somehow you have to get people to buy the product because they like it. And somehow you have to get people to help you promote the business, right? Is this, have we got this? Is anybody unclear about this? So we all kind of know this is what we're supposed to do. Now, customers don't normally fall out of the sky. We have to hustle and get them. Some people do ads like on TV or on the internet or what have you. But a lot of us, we don't want to spend a million bucks on ads. So we do what we call direct response marketing, direct sales and direct marketing. We call people, we DM people, we text people. We put stuff on, you know, on the internet. We might even run a few ads, five or ten dollars a day, and have people respond. And then we show them what we've got, and we hope somebody says yes. Right? That's it. Is that kind of the deal? And what I have found is a lot of people don't do what they know. Would you say you're one of those that you you kind of know what to do, but you don't do it? Right? And this means always one thing. That there's something in here we need to have a switch and change it and change it that's all because there's a real common reason in the industry of network marketing and affiliate sales affiliate marketing that almost nobody makes any money or does anything hey there she is you know what i did vic while i was waiting for you um i rousted brooke out of bed and so she's here and penny's here i got a backup crew girl and i just said Oh, we can help poor Vicky. She's drowning in the sandstorm. So I can't hear you yet, but um, I thanks, just, I'm thanks, delighted. Kim. Thanks, Kim. I'm off video for a reason because I'm trying to find a spot. So good. Actually, you're fine. You're on video right now. We all can love you and see you. Okay, so you're good. great. It kept yeah. going on and off. So I thought I should be off. You're good. You're good. You just stay okay. right there. We have Brooke to back up. We have Penny to back up. We And we got a crowd, a smart bunch. They all said, you know, we... Good. Every we time I start to go on video, it knocks me off. So let's yeah. try this. <laughs> we, we're good. We're good. All right. So uh, we just, the point we just made with everybody is that you realize you all kind of know you got to bring in people who are going to buy stuff. So whether you bring them in and encourage them to buy from you as a customer or as a recruit, or whether you talk about selling them, somebody has to hand over money and be on your team in order for you to make any money. Have we got this part? Hello, yes or no, let me make sure you understand that. The money does not come by you talking to people. You say, oh, just talk to people, really? What if you talk to 50 people today? What if you did, how, many, how much money have you made? What does each person pay you? Does each person pay you anything, yes or no? If you talk to 20 people with great passion, does that mean you've earned anything? Yes or no? Who's got it? Tracy, you think uh, you order, if you talk to 50 people, you're gonna, or you, 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 does that mean talking to 50 people that you're gonna make some money, Tracy? But isn't that what they tell us? What do you have to do to get rich? Oh, just talk to people. That's all you have to do, just talk to people. Can't you talk to people? You do it every day, right? 
That's what they say. But there's no money. It's 95% of the people make no money in this industry. And there's a reason for that. Because talking to people is not enough. Talking about the hemorrhoids, talking about the kids, talking about the weather, talking about the sandstorm makes you nada. You don't make any money doing that. So you have to learn how to talk so that somebody out there says, I want to buy that. And that's kind of a different cup of tea. And I want to show you today a couple of things that'll help you get over that bump of knowing kind of what to do and not doing it. Does that sound good to you? It's really one thing. And it's very hard to do. I'm warning you now. It's not hard like tarring a roof in 100 degree weather in Georgia. No, it's not that kind of hard. It's brain hard. Can you live with that? If I tell you a hard thing, you're not going to hang up on me? Is it okay to be hard? Let me see in the chat. Say hard. I'm okay with hard. Not a sit and wish. Yeah, really? Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Get a piece of paper. And when I say a piece of paper, I mean, you know, like, um, you know, like this kind of a paper, a pad, except obviously make it a clean one, right? You can do this side or you can do this side. Or if you have, <clears throat> if you have one of these old fashioned ones here, you know, like this, that works. Are we good? Everybody got this? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna draw a line. Everybody have the line? Say, yes, I've got the line. Greg, you got the line? Tracy, have you got the line? Vic, check with everybody. Make sure everybody says, yes, I have the line. Yes, you yes, it? yes, they've all got the gone. line. Um, we're not gonna get the candy at the end. No, no <laughs> dessert. <clears throat> Ingrid, good, nice to see you. Draw the line. Okay, so before I ask you what you wanna earn in the next 12 months, let me ask you first, now tell true, don't give me any, you know, pie in the sky because it doesn't matter. Pie in the sky does not go into your bank account. It doesn't, it's not even a real pie, you know? How many of you feel that what the product you have in the business that you're promoting, that it can really help other people? On a scale of one to 10, one is, well, I'm pretty sure it can help people, probably, you know, sort of. And 10 is, oh my gosh, this could you know change anybody's life who does it and believes in it and does it and takes it the business and or the product where are you on a scale of one to ten ten is absolutely totally hundred percent thousand percent or one is eh, not so much maybe where are you a ten all tens so far okay so that would mean that you should want a lot of people to have your product or your program and to buy it am i correct or not you should want a lot of people to have it. Now, if a lot of people have your product and a lot of people and a few people are recruits, you know, they, they market for you, that means you should be making a lot of money. Am I correct or not? Who's okay with making money here? Because I know in a lot of places, people are, you know, oh, I don't do it for the money. I just do it for the passion. Okay, great. You can do that if you want. You'll stay in a poor house. I don't know how, how you can help anybody if you're poor. If you're broke, how are you going to help the next person? So that means you might actually make some money, some gangster money. Who's good with making gangster money? Right? Yeah. I mean, what's gangster money? Well, let's, let me, this is where I want to ask you right now. Here's this line. Don't forget, have a, a clean piece of paper for the rest of it. In the next 12 months, what would you like to earn that you believe you can earn with your business in the next 12 months? So if you say, oh, I want to make, I believe I could make, say, 3000 a month, 5000 a month, 10000 a month. In the next 12 months, how much do you want to earn that you believe you can earn if you do the work required to bring people to you uh, so that they can buy and be part of your team? Okay, hey, Vic, what, what are the numbers that we've got? So far, just one. Tracy, 60,000 <clears> in the next 12 months. Pam, 10K. Okay. So no other numbers? Nobody wants to make anything? or you, Don't be chicken. Just put a number that you can believe. Amanda, 3,000 3, okay. a month. And okay. Leslie Moons has 5,000. Okay, these are monthlies, right? 
Yeah, 7,000 okay. a month from Mike. Okay. These are monthly, are these not monthly, okay? So what we're gonna do now on this piece of paper, leave a space between the line that I just, just like you see here, leave you know a space for another, we're gonna put two numbers. Put the number per year here that you wanna make. So if you said you wanna make <clears throat> 7,000 a month, what's that times 12? Put that number here. Seven times 12 is um, what? 14, 84,000? Yep. Norman, yep. if you have 3,500, what is that times 12, Vic? What's 85, 3,500 times 12? Okay, so, because uh, I'm going to pick a number here to put here. Yep. Everybody have that? Norman, 3,500 a month times 12. So that'd be what, 35, 50,000? Yep. Somewhere around there. I got to get my calculator. Yeah, get your, so we get these numbers. Any other numbers for anybody? Yahoo. You guys there? Okay, it's the annual number there. So let's say that we say, Greg, you said 60,000. Okay, now the number underneath is gonna be this number. <clears throat> what did you earn with your business last year? Okay, so above this, <laughs> we're gonna have 100 grand. Let's, let's put, we can put $100,000 here, okay? Or, right, you pick, pick, put the first number, what you want to earn that you believe you can earn in the next 12 months. So between now and 12 months from now, if you make 10,000 a month, that would be 120,000. If you make 8,000 a month, okay? Or 3,000 a month, that would be 36,000, right? You got that? Okay, put the number here. Next number, what did you actually earn the past 12 months for your business annualized? Who's got those numbers? So let's say that you want to earn, <clears throat> we want, you know, you don't have to reveal this out loud. You know, we're not gonna make anybody feel bad. The idea is you, for you to be concrete about this instead of pie in the sky, okay? Let's say that you want to earn $100,000. Okay. Let's say that you want to earn $100,000. Hang on here. Next, next year, a hundred thousand. Have we got this? this? Is what we put here. <clears throat> you put your number here, thirty-six thousand for the year. Because some of you are going to be doing it maybe an hour a day or an hour and a half a day. So put the number that you want on your sheet for the annual. Does everybody have it? You want to earn so much in the next twelve months, for all twelve months. Tell me, yes, you have it. <clears throat> that you have your numbers. Okay. Now the next line is going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be this. What did you earn last year? So we're talking last 12 months and this 12 months. Okay. Now I'm going to, now you put your number that you put in here. Some people are going to say zero. I didn't earn anything. Some people are going to say, well, I earned $164. It doesn't matter what the number is. Put an accurate number that you earned in the last 12 months. You don't have to tell out loud here. Like I said, it's your business. Okay, many people have been in the business 10 years and they're at two or $300. Countless people have not even made $1,000. So don't worry. And there's no excusing anything you put this is like a notebook. John Rockefeller said he ran everything with an accounting notebook. So you want to be accurate and not be, you know, wussy cotton candy. If you want to make money, you have to be able to look at these numbers and know what they are. So if you want to earn a hundred grand next year, assuming that you, you believe it and you can do the work and the year before past year, you earn $10,000. What's left? $90,000. Right? 90,000, are we there? You have your number here. I want you to all put a number here at the bottom. The number that, that you didn't earn, right? You wanna earn this much? Last year you got this much. Here's what's left. Does everybody have this number? We got it? Tell me yes in the chat. 
Okay, this will be your number. Let me tell you what that number means. Does everybody understand the math this far? What you want to earn next year in 12 months. Add it up, 2,000 a month, 1,000 a month, 500 a month. I don't care what it is. Multiply by 12. That's your number for next year. The second number, the red one, is what did you earn last year from your business? And it'll be anywhere from zero to, you might even have put money in and you didn't get anything back, say zero to, that, to the number that you're earning, that you're trying to earn. Got it? Here's what that $90,000 is, okay? <clears throat> 90000 is what you lost by not learning how to earn what you said you want to earn. That's what this represents. That's what you're paying out to not know how to earn it. How many of you know that you could earn this if you knew how and if you did the thing, that you could earn this 100000 How many people believe they can because they believe enough that their product can help other people, that those other people would buy enough of it so that they get better and their health and you earn money from marketing a product that people really want to have. How many people believe that? All right, because if you do believe that, then the 90,000 or whatever that difference is, is what you lost because you haven't learned how to do what you have to do to earn the money that you said you want. And that also means that all those people you said you could help are left out there without you helping them. They're all left by you. How does that make you feel? So you wanna, the question I have for you is, do you wanna lose that amount again this year, this coming year? Do you wanna lose it again? Because you didn't learn how to do it. Do you wanna pay that cost again? Okay. Do you want to pay it again? That's really the question, isn't it? You can pay it again if you want. Just stay the way you are. But this is a big cost. It's called, in, in the world of economics, they call this an opportunity cost. Because, you know, we think about, oh, I have to pay her $50,000. I have to pay Harvard $100,000. Or I have to pay $100,000 to be at a dinner with Elon Musk. Because you know, he goes to dinner and somebody wants to come. It's, I think it's 100 grand for 20 people. Why would anybody pay 100 grand? To get access to the funnest, cutest, smartest guy in the world. That's why they want to be in the room with those people. Then you might not pay it, but you're, you know, that's you. But it, there's lines out the door waiting for that. Okay. So if you don't want to lose it again this year, if you don't want to, then just think about it. Do you want to think, well, how much is this going to cost me? Yeah. But how much does it cost you if you don't do something about your situation? And that's always what we have to weigh. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Here we go. You can ask it in the chat. If we get there, we will. So are you ready to get the rest of the show on the road? Are you ready to go? Say yes. <clears throat> So in other words, every business opportunity will cost you effort, time, emotion, and you will be putting your heart and soul and self on the line. The public, other people will see you failing and floundering and flopping around. And this is what keeps most people from never trying a single thing. That fear of what, oh my God, I might do it wrong. Well, you will do it wrong all the way to the bank. There's, that's the way God made it. Blame him or her. That's the way it is. You cannot achieve anything without putting in first the time, the effort, all of that. You go to Harvard. You have to pay before they let you in. Did you know that? And there's not even a guarantee that when you finish that you'll have some fat gig. There's no guarantee you'll have a job. There are thousands and thousands of professors and people, professors, broke professors, broke experts. They have a ton of credentials and they don't know how to market. They feel people should come to them. So you see, if you don't figure out that you have to put out money, time, effort, belief, and most of all, your emotional self, that's what we do. Yeah, somebody here might go, well, that's really dumb. What, what am I going to do? Nothing. Do I care? Well, I wish you didn't feel that way, but you know, I sell a vista. You can do something else. I do my thing for people who hear the call, just like Jesus said, my sheep hear my name. 
your people that you are going to be working with that you're calling that you're that you believe you're called to help they will hear your name with your product and your program do you see how that works say yes tell me you understand this that's how the world works okay nobody's going to come find you on your couch when you're eating doritos watching tv that's not how it's going to work okay all right so here we go i have three stories i want to tell you and we, these stories are stories I've told in the past. And it's kind of like the story of, I don't know, the birth in the manger or something. People have heard it a hundred thousand times, but they never can get enough of it. And so I want to tell you, there's one thing that a person needs. If you really want to become a badass recruiter, remember I told you the one thing, one thing right here. And here, here is what that is at the top. Think different. That's why I gave you that first example. What's the first example? How much do you want to make? Oh, this much. What'd you make last year? Oh, well, only this much. The difference is what your cost was. That's what you paid. Life. Not by not learning how to earn the money that you say you want. If you refuse to learn to do it, then how are you ever going to get it? And we know as humans, we're able to learn. All of us can learn. That's what we do. Humans are learning machines. We always want to go to the next step. So that's why this is a way of thinking about it. It's a little bit different. Many, it costs you more not to do it. You know, Elon Musk, he um, was once like everybody else, just a, 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 a typical human being, kind of a, like a so-called nobody. And when he came to America, he got involved. He was all, he was a tech person. So he really liked technology. And he, he and Peter Thiel, and I forget, three or four other guys developed PayPal. And they sold PayPal for, I don't know, a couple, two, three hundred million dollars, which of course sounds like a veritable fortune. It was, his share, I think, was like 150 million, something like that, Elon Musk. And so uh, maybe 120. And so you would think, well, that'd be enough. I could retire for 100 centuries, right? But what he did is he put, he bought one fancy thing for himself, the McLaren car, which is slightly under a million dollars. And he put all the chips back on the table, all of it. And he put, I think, 80 million towards Tesla and 40 or 45 million towards SpaceX. That's what he did. This is called think different. This is not what most people would do, but he did, you see. So the whole idea is you, you have to plant in order to multiply. And he took his money, almost all of it, and put it at risk again with his own energy behind it, knowing that he would do whatever he could and, and, and short of death in the immediate body. And he's been bankrupt almost three or four times. I mean, like Christmas Eve. And if they hadn't financed him over Christmas Eve to de from December 24 to December 25 to December 26, Tesla would have gone bankrupt. I'm telling you, bankrupt. Not maybe, and but just completely bankrupt. They were short, I forget, 85 million or something to, to hit payroll. But you know, it's like he puts it all on the line. You have to think, are those people that are waiting for you, for you to help them, are they worth you putting your butt on the line or not? You know, Because that's where the big returns come. You plant big, you sow big and you reap big. Have I sold you? That's called think different. It's not wiener. Okay, so here's what's different about a billionaire. I want to tell you three stories. One is the way they think. And one of these examples is from this um, wonderful book. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Remember this book, The Tools of Titans? Remember this? Can you see this book, Vic? Can you see? Yes, Tim Ferriss, he interviews, oh my gosh, the billionaires. That's what these were. And in the first part of this book, um, Tim Ferriss asked Peter Thiel, Peter Thiel is one of the PayPal founders, and of course, he's now a giant uh, investor. He said, okay, so what's different about you versus a regular person? And Peter Thiel said, well, the way we think about things. So Tim Ferriss says, okay, so give me an example. And Peter Thiel said, well, the question we just asked you, remember, in 10 years, well, in fact, I said, next year, how much do you want to earn? right? 
You got that? Remember that? I asked you next year how much you want to earn. You go, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to make 100 grand. I want to make 50 grand, whatever, right? And now his question was, in 10 years, how much do you want to earn? So put it out there. In 10 years, how much do you want to be earning per month? And let's say that somebody says, oh, well, if it's a regular person with a regular job, then they might be thinking, well, if I earn, you know, $3,000 as an accountant or bookkeeper or 4,000, maybe 5,000, maybe at the end of 10 years, I could be making five or 6,000 a month. That's the job, not job mentality. You earn, you make a little bit more every year with your job. Am I right, guys? Have we got this? All of you have jobs, right? Most of you. And you make a little bit more money every year, get a little bonus maybe, and then you make another 5%, 5%. Okay, so Peter Steele says, <clears throat> let's say that in 10 years, you say in 10 years, I wanna be making $100,000 a month. And you know what a billionaire does? <clears throat> a normal person will think, well, five to 10% a year, add 10%, 10%, 10%. You know how we do all the way to 40 years, you get your gold watch or whatever. This is what that looks like. So it's now 2022, 20, 23, 24, 25. And maybe in 10 years, you know, you're going to have whatever your number is. Over all these years, 5%, 5% more, 5%. Do you see this? You guys all see this? Tell me yes. And here's how a billionaire thinks. He said, here's how I would think about this question. Not 10 years with 5%, 5%, 5% and bonuses. No. The question would be, how could I do that? Get to that number in 10 years, in six months. How do you do that? That is the question they ask. And you, your, your brain, because you're human, might go, oh, you could never do that. And then you have to say, okay, well, what if I could do that? Because the only limit is what's in your head and what you know. Well, there are other heads. Did you know that? You can partner up with people who think like this. Just hang on to their shirt tails. So how, how could you do that? Well. Let's see, I tell you, um, many years ago when I first started this, this uh, business, the water filters were the first time probably I did anything like this. And they said, well, you call people and then we kind of one by one, you know? And so I thought, okay, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And I did that for maybe 10, 15, 20 calls. And then I thought this is really so stupid. I mean, geez, there's no leverage. One, one, one. That was my thinking, see? And I don't know about you, how many of you have you have called five, 10 people in a day and you get kind of tired, half of them aren't home, half of them say no, half of them don't even know what you're talking about. Like, do you like doing that stuff? Who enjoys calling one by one by one or DMing one by one or Facebooking one by one by one? Anybody like doing that? Right? And this was the day of the phone, you know, we didn't have dial up, but I mean, it was, you know, push button phones. And it's like, I'm not doing that. So what I decided to do is we learned, they had just started conference calling. Remember Vic, the old conference call.com. So I told people, you know what? You all have a phone. I have a phone. I'm going to do a call. I'm going to do the same thing. And on a Friday night, every Friday night, this is 30 years ago, I would have a call and tell them, so instead of calling me, call into this number. And I did 30 people at a time. Boom. I never looked back. I don't want to do one by one by one by one. No, no, no. That would take me 30 calls, 30 dials, 30 conversations, 30 hours probably. If I make those same 30 people call a number and I get 25 of them, I do one presentation, I have scrunched it from 30 hours to one hour because I get all 30 in the room at the same time. You guys see that? Hello, yoo-hoo, are we there? Tell me you understand. This is how you leverage time and how you buy time. So you don't have to take until you're 95 to get there. You see that? All right, that's how you do it. That's what he said. I'm going to figure out how to do that in six months. So instead of getting $100,000 a month, if that were the number, in 10 years, we're going to get it in the first half of 2022. You see? And there are different ways to make money. My tip that I showed you about using that conference call place was after calling 10 people and realizing what it, this has got to be, this is talk about idiotic. It's just a complete waste of time. I'm telling everybody the same damn thing. So why, why would I want to make 30 calls saying, hey, you know, mm -hmm. now for training, you do it. But I was ready in real estate. I knew how to talk to people. I don't have any fear around talking to you or anybody else. 
you know, God came down. Hey, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity. Thanks for Zoom too. Now sit down. I got something cool for you. You got to be proud. That's what I would do. Because I'm comfortable with what I do, with what I have, what I know. And that's what you get when you do it a lot over and over and over. Right? This is kind of what one does. So you do it in six months instead of in 10 years. Do you see that? That's how billionaires think. And you have a brain too. And you can think the same way or learn from people. You know, it's not how should you do it, but who can you go to to get the help? That's what I do when I'm out of my league, which is most of the time. Who knows how to do this? Call them, connect with them, email them, do something. Who? Not how, but who can help you? If you don't know how to do this, you figure out who could help. Find somebody that knows how to help you do these things. Okay, so compressing time. So instead of doing one-on-one, -on -one, we do one-to-many. And that was like that, the, the example with the call. And today we do one-to-many. What do we have here? Zoom, right? We got one-to-many, right, Brooke? And then I wanted to tell you the story of the doomed fly. This is a really interesting story because many people, see if you, if you, this is two paragraphs, which I'm going to read you from a book, by the way, it's called, um, <clears throat> let me show you this little book. It's like 32 pages, I think. See this book? You squared, Vic, am I showing it correctly? You all can see it? Yeah. It's I see clear. One. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, this is a, an example of a, of a fly on a, on a windshield. And the story I'm reading you is there's this guy, Ken Pritchett, I mean, Price Pritchett, he went on vacation into the woods and he got a little cabin. And he said, you know, there's a small fly burning out the last of its short life's energies in a futile attempt to fly through the glass of the window pane. So picture he's sitting in his cabin and he's got windows, of course, and there's an open door to a little creek and the woods where he's sitting, right? <clears throat> Watch the thing right here. The book is called U Squared, written as U2. Yeah. So he says, but the, the fly is trying to, you know, fly against the glass, just like I show you here, but it's not working. The frenzied effort offers no hope for survival. Ironically, the struggle is part of the trap. It is impossible for the fly to try hard enough to succeed at breaking through the glass. Nevertheless, this little insect has staked its life on reaching its goal through raw effort and determination. The fly is doomed. It will die there on the windowsill. Do you all know that, by the way? Is there any issue? They are going to die on the windowsill. Yes or no? Who's going to win? The glass windowsill or the fly? If the fly's trying to go out through the glass. Across the room, 10 steps away, because he's watching the fly sitting there at his little desk, right? Looking at, and right beside him on the other side of the same room, because he was in one room, his front door was open to the path, to the, to the Redwood Forest where he was. And he said, the fly is doomed, it will die on the windowsill. Across the room, 10 steps away, the door is open. 10 seconds of flying time, and this small creature could reach the outside world it seeks with only a fraction of the effort now being wasted it could be free of the self-imposed trap. The breakthrough possibility is there. It would be so easy. Why doesn't the fly try another approach? Something dramatically different. How did it get so locked in on the idea that this particular route and determined effort offer the most promise for success? What logic is there in continuing until death to seek a breakthrough with more of the same? No doubt this approach makes sense to the fly. Regrettably, it's an idea that will kill. And granted, it's just a fly, but how many of us are acting like flies, doing the same thing over and over, all in one person at a time, having no idea before you call anybody if they even have an interest. And you call one at a time, calling all the wrong people, and you call 50 people, and you get maybe one buyer who then returns it because they just did you a favor. How long do you think you're going to last before you die on the windowsill? And it's not physical death, it's mental death. You've given up on yourself. You've given up on having a business, building something, helping people, all because we're, we got our fly brain working here, right? And then you get this industry that says duplicate, and that makes it even worse, because then you think, well, that's what you're supposed to do. 
And that's why this in, in the business of network marketing, more than 100% of the people actually quit. Why more than 100%? Well, because so, so many people quit more than one deal. How many of you have been two or three deals and you quit two or three already, right? It's like the way it is, right? But this was the story I wanted to be able to. So trying harder, doing the same thing may not really be the way forward. You see that? Do you want to be a doom fly? Who wants to be a doom fly here? In terms of your business, you tell me. Who wants to be that? Yes or no? But you see, if you don't change how you think and therefore what you do, that's the path you'll be on. Either that or you'll you quit the whole business, which means you did die as far as that's concerned. Okay. All right. So quit trying harder. Another thing, you, you shift gears. You do something different. You got to go out the front door where there's air, not glass. Okay. One of the things that we do here is one of the things you can do that's different instead of calling every single person one by one is pre-qualify people before you present. Now, this is something we learned really early. <clears throat> and you can ask three different questions <coughs> that we have. Let's say that you say, <clears throat> sorry, you can hardly talk anymore. I don't know anyone. I'm not a salesperson <clears throat> or I'm an introvert. Okay. We're going to teach this is we're going to now change thinking. We're going to think different. Are you ready for this? You guys awake for this? Leslie, I know you're there. Be awake for this or you'll miss it. And you end up like the doom fly exactly where you are right now, banging on the wall, banging on the wall, hoping that maybe someday you're going to make a hundred grand or 10 grand or anything. And you won't make Jack. You'll just feel like a failure and like a wreck. That's what you're going to feel like. I don't know anyone. I'm not a salesperson. I'm an introvert. Okay. How many of you have heard these things from people or how many of you even feel like, like this? Do we have some takers here? It's okay. We love you anyway. We're going to fix you. We think we can fix you. If you're ready to be fixed, that was you. <laughs> Look, you're so funny. I don't know anyone. Okay. Let's say you say, I don't know anybody. How many of you would say that? I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody. Good. Right. Okay, so here's the question you ask yourself. I don't know anyone, and what's the usual thing that follows? So I can't do this. Am I right? I don't know anyone, so I can't do this. Yes, yes or no? How many people have you talked to? Say, well, I don't know anybody. Like Penny, right? I don't know anybody, so I can't do this. But you see, that is a wrong conclusion. That is the doomed fly. It's his conclusion because he's got his fly brain on and you are using your doomed fly brain right here. If you say, I don't know anyone, therefore I should quit. I can't do this. No, you ask a different question. Who has an audience that already buys what I'm offering? That's the question you ask. I don't know anyone. Okay, so who does? Who's got a whole audience of people like that? And then you partner with them. Say, hey, can I do a little show for your people? Give you a little cut. Remember, if you think you're, you don't know anyone, there are people who have millions of people who know people. Like if you could get a session with Tony Robbins, that'd be really cool. He knows a lot of people that probably want something like what you have. Right? There are countless influencers out there who have a whole audience of people that would probably, that, that, that those, that audience of that people is buying the kind of thing that you have, your product. Doesn't have to be a network marketing business, but it can be the product that does the thing that you have. Okay. So that's certainly one way you can do it. Here's another one. I'm not a salesperson. So you might be, have said that to yourself. I'm not a salesperson, so I can't do this. Another way to look at this is how can I become someone who loves offering people what they want and get paid for it? What do you think business is? Everything you buy, everything from the glass to the phone, to, the, to a cup that you have, to the shirts, the hats, anything, you bought it because you wanted it. And you wouldn't have been able to buy it had somebody else not made it, manufactured it, and advertised it somehow. So it came to your attention. And then you bought it. So if you want to become someone who loves offering people what they want and get paid with, for it, 
and partner up with somebody like that, that is the other way to answer this. I'm not a salesperson, therefore I can't, I do this business. How can I become someone who loves offering doing that? If you think you can help people, remember people will buy. You know, they don't talk about what do you do? Oh, I share real estate. No, I sell real estate, right? I, I share beach houses. No, you actually sell them, right? I share phones. No, Apple sells phones. Does that make sense? Why? To people who love them, people who want them. So you set yourself up as someone that's a magnet for what you've got. And what you've got is not your pill. It's the thing they want. Like you help people, you might say, you know, I help people get their sexy back. If you want to have a new relationship where they beg three times a week for you, click here. That's what somebody wants. They don't want your pills. They don't want to work out at the gym. Are you kidding? Nobody wants to do the work. We all sell the work, right? You need a mindset shift. No, nobody wants that. But I want to be totally, uh, be able to strut my stuff. Like Tony Robbins used to say, I'm going to strut my stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. What is that right here? Does he sell this or does he say, do you want to go, yeah? What does he sell? Do you want, to you want to know how to stretch your stuff and feel like you're the boss whenever you walk down the street or into a room or into a stadium or onto a, right? You want to feel like you are, you've got it together. That's the outcome you're selling. The means to it, which is the path from, you know, wussy you to strut you is whatever the work is that you're offering to help the person do to become, to go from a wussy person to strut my stuff on stage person. Do you see that? So that's how you learn to market, okay? So how do you become this person? I'm an introvert. A lot of people say, oh, I'm an introvert. Brooke, weren't you that, an introvert? Do you have any idea how many people that are introverts are super rich? And they're pretty much still introverts. Russell is no longer an introvert. He's really changed. But Frank Kern is still an introvert. Russell Brunson said it took him four or five years to be able to get on camera. And he did it over and over and over and over and over. Vicky is an introvert. To get her on stage, we used to ply her with um, Vic Bailey's. Bailey. Bailey. Right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so she hit national marketing director, which is the top spot in that company that we were in. And she had to go on stage. She said, oh my God, I can't speak. I said, I know, I know. I got the Bailey's. Don't worry. And so it was, you know, and, and, and still, I would say, you know, I don't know if you still think you're an introvert, but you what you think about it a little bit differently about getting in front of a camera now Vic, don't you think than you did before well, i don't have to drink baileys anymore <laughs> yeah you see so, yeah so i you know she's not all crazy wild say like me but she doesn't need to drink baileys anymore and brooke was another one was very um you know could barely stick her head on camera and, you know, it takes, sometimes it takes a little time and doing it a lot. It's like learning the piano. How good are you the first time? How good are you the second time or the third time or the 10th time? Since when does anyone learn any skill in 10 tries? So if you say you're an introvert and therefore I can't do this, it's okay. But then it, you can also say I'm an introvert and who are introverts that have really overcome this or that have done it anyway? I have a partner who's uh, very introverted. And so the relationship is I'll go out and market the stuff and you do everything on the other end in the back office that doesn't require being out loud, out front like me. It's very easy. You just find somebody who is like what I need that could help me do this. Because remember, you all said at the beginning, you want to make 10, 20, $30,000 a month because you think you can help other people with your product or your business. Am I right? So unless you're planning to leave all those people out there, you start answering these objections with different answers. Do you see that? All right, all right, good. So you, when there's an issue, what you wanna figure out is how do I, how do I, how do we do it again and we make it better the next time, okay? Remember, there are all kinds of issues. Elon just lost 40 satellites. What's the next thing that you see on his tweet, on his Twitter account? How two rockets are coming down that were successful that they put up the next day. Why? Because they know crap happens. 
it's the way it is. It's like God saying, see if you can last. And then they do something wonderful. They've got all kinds of startling stuff going up right now. Okay. So these are the kinds of things that we teach people how to do so that you're not out there thinking, I don't know how to do this because it's really a way of thinking how to think different. So that's what I have for you. And I can show you how we do this. If you want to see how we, we do this, we have something called the big school. And there are four pieces to the system that help you go from being a doom fly to somebody who is out there helping the people that you think you want to help, who are paying you happily because they want the help that you're giving them and growing a business. Who wants to see how to, to make that work? Let me see in the chat. And I can show you what the system setup is so you can see how to do this. See if you, if you want some help from us to do that. Let me know in the chat, otherwise we're good to go. If you wanna see how we do this, I'll show you the four steps that we have. Yeah, or you can stay the way you are, you know, we're good, we're doing this, this is what we're doing, this is how we're building our teams, and this is how we build our business, because we wanna be part of the Elon Musk generation. We don't wanna be a doomed fly. And we're all human, you know, and that makes a big difference. Norman, you want to put your, set your chat to, um, to everybody. Okay. And so here, here's how this goes. Okay, cool. You want to see it? I'll show it to you. There are four pieces you need to make this work. And no matter what your market, one is you need to make a decision at the top left there that you are going to build something. It doesn't matter how big or how small you're going to build something because you think you can help people. If you really have something to help people, maybe it's your obligation to do that and to get the word out to them. So you have to decide first. And then there are four things you need to do. We, you have to figure out how to attract the people who already want what you have to you. And we have something called the attractive formula that shows you how to do that. It says, so you're not gonna go door knocking just to oh, anybody. You're going to figure out how to Position yourself and attract the people to you who already want what you have. And online, that's of course a lot easier because you learn how to run ads, you learn how to do postings, you learn how to send messages. When you call people on the phone, you have a couple of qualifying questions so that you, spay, you spend absolutely no time with the wrong people. All these things, right? So the attractor formula, so you attract people that are already interested in buying and that's all you talk to. Who would like to do that, okay? And that could maybe help you. Number two, we show you how to set up a sewing machine. Sewing, S-N-S-O-W-I-N-G. And that is where you're gonna seed the earth. Just like the sower in the Bible story, remember? The sower has a big bag of seed and he has good seed and he sows and he sows and he sows. And what happens? The bird gets on. The, some of them fall on the rocks, right? Some of them you have, <laughs> they start growing and then they grow in kind of like thorny plants and the little plants, you know, <laughs> they choke it to death. But some falls on good soil. And we're gonna show you how to do that so that you are safe while all that's happening and not getting any nose in your face, okay? So you see the earth. Then the third step is you, we, we help you create what we call virtual magnets while that seed is germinating and you have sown it over there, some of that is going to grow soon. And it wants to know, well, what else is there? What else can we do? And we have a virtual magnet, which is in the form of, it can be a PDF, it can be an audio, it can be a video, where those folks go next on their own to see what the next step is. And for those who pass the test, in other words, they say, yeah, I, this is what I want, they end up enrolling on your calendar, which we'll show you how to set up. And then you get to do an interview, an enrollment interview, either whether it's for the customer or the client or for the business, either one. And there's a diagnostic conversation template that you get. So you know what questions to ask to get the right people in. And of those, I would say that uh, for the network marketing businesses, we've used this, we've built six of these. We're, we're actually building an experimental team number seven right now. Every Four or five years, we build another one, make sure we can still do it. And this is the process we use, of course. And I would say for uh, the people that we talk to where we've done the enroller, the virtual magnet and the enroller, 
um, the, the enroller interview that we have, it's probably seven or eight out of 10 that we talk to sign up at, the, at a bare minimum. Is that right, Vic? Would, would you say that's correct? Yeah, it's seven or eight out of 10 at a bare yeah. minimum. That's right. That's right. And for our major recruiting program, it's slightly less, maybe six or so. But we hardly, first of all, we don't talk to anyone who doesn't have an interest because they've already, they're all self-selected, you see. This is all, they self-select. It's like going to Harvard. Harvard doesn't recruit. Why should we, I mean, why should they recruit, right? People come to them because they know what it is that Harvard offers. You be exactly your Harvard for what you've got. You and your product and what you have to offer and why you believe in it. That is your, you put down your flag and put it everywhere. So you sew all over the place. And people who want that, they come to you. That's how we set that up. Okay, that's the whole idea. That's what you want. That's what we have. Uh, and then what's totally fun, the most fun of all is once you start getting people in your business, then it's like a totally new cup of tea because what happens next? Well, you got new problems. And which ones are they? Well, you, you have a team. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I have somebody. What should I do next? I have real people. Oh my gosh, they're coming to me. What should I do? Right? You have friends asking you for money because now you have some. Right? And you might very well have people saying, well, you know, crypto, what should I, you know, crypto's kind of been taken a bath. But if you don't sell, by the way, for those of you that are in crypto, don't do anything. Just sit. Just sit. You know, it goes up, the whole market is up and down. People want to get in thinking it's just going to go up. Don't be idiotic. If it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. And you made the whole thing made trash. That's possible. But you only lose money in crypto when you sell below what you bought. So quit selling. Just sit and be quiet. That's right? True. And so if it goes to zero, it goes to zero. I mean, there are very few of the top 50 or 100 cryptos that have gone to zero. So just don't sell and you won't lose. <laughs> just leave it in there. Okay, so we're to vacation. People will ask you for money because you'll actually have some money now. So we will show you how to get your team started so that they can follow a process like this and not end up and be the doomed fly, banging on all the wrong people day after day after day, one at a time, and finally dropping dead of exhaustion, thinking that they are stupid when the door to the outside is right beside them, which is what we're offering you, one of those doors that you can do this. Does that sound like fun? Tell me yes. Because the next step there, I know, you know, what we have is for just a few people because we really take you and help you transform into that and really into the butterfly that you want to be. And so the next step for people who want to know what that is, is go to maxout.com forward slash pick me. If you want to put that in there, um, I think that'd be great maxout.com, pick me, and you'll see a little form just like this. So it's a short app, so we can see if we can help you or not. And again, you know, if you want to build something that is significant, this is, this is who it's for. And sometimes people say, oh, you know, it's going to be 100 grand. It's not 100 grand. It's not even 50 grand. But it is money. And it's not, you know, like a cheap date. And what you want to think about is, oh my gosh, you know, why does anybody pay Harvard a hundred grand? Well, they want the opportunity to be able to say, I guess that they went. And I mean, that's the reason I went, you know, my parents are academics and well, my dad was a businessman, but my mother was an academic and they were, she was very proud of all their academic stuff that they had had. You know, they, they go to all these European universities about, in their history, you know, <laughs> and it's like, Nobody had ever been to Harvard. Of course, how could they? They all lived in Holland. So when I came over, when we were came over to America, it's like nobody had ever been to Harvard. And I really wanted to beat my mom at something. So I thought, you know what? I bet if I can get in that school, I'll have kind of one up you, right? And so I told her, you know, I'm going to see if I can get in that school. I said, really? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get in. And that was the reason, just to see if I could. Because was it as good as the Sorbonne? Well, probably not. But, you know, who knows? It all depends on your values. But that's what made me want to do it. So reasons don't have to come from heaven, you know, like some, you're going to go be like Jesus or something. It can just be something as simple as competition. You know, Frank Kern, years ago, when we first started working with him, he, 
he there's a guy named John Reese. Some of you, if you're you're old timers on the internet, you know there's a young man named John Reese, and he was the first guy that we know of on the internet to have a million dollar day, one million dollars in one day, 20 years, 25 years ago. And that was Frank Kern's friend. And Frank Kern told us all he nearly died. What do you mean John Reese can make a million dollars in a day? Of course, if he can do it, I can do it, right? And within six months, Frank Kern had come up with this program called Mass Control. Some of you may know that. We were affiliates for it, sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of it. And sure enough, in 24 hours, he had enough orders coming in for a $2,000 product. He had 1,000 orders come in for a $2,000 product, which gave him a $2 million day. But since he paid out 50% in commissions, he ended up with a million dollars. So, you know, your goals are when you make a decision about do you want to really make something big, try to make the decision not from your weak, doomed fly self, but from the self that you want to be a year from now or five years from now, what would that self do? What would they pay not to miss the opportunity? See, if Elon Musk had not put his money back that he earned from PayPal, all of it, to build Tesla, he would have, his cost would have been, I believe his company, he's worth like a hundred billion dollars. That was, would have been the opportunity cost that he would have given up had he not taken all the money he got from PayPal, because he had nothing before that, and put it up to build Tesla. And that was what, 80 million, and now it's worth a hundred million, a billion. So you just take the same numbers for you. You might say, oh, you know, 10 grand, but it might be worse than, 10 grand a month to me. And if that person that can picture being that one that does stuff, that leverages stuff, that's not the doom fly, make your decisions from that version of yourself. Do you understand what I mean? Because that's the only way you're going to get off your doom fly pot right now. Because if you keep making the decisions, the doom fly from that identity, you will end up like the doom fly. It's just, it's a very interesting thing. And I have to do it too. So does Vicky, so does Brooke. All of us are looking to make decisions from the next version of ourselves. So is Elon. All of us have to make a decision from the next one of us that we're trying to become, not the one that we are right now. Otherwise, we're not going to move off the dime. See that? Okay, so that's what you want to do. Uh, Vic is here. We can, we have space for a couple of people. So if you want to be first in line to talk to her and see what we'll do is see, number one, what you want to achieve. Two, where have you been? What do you bring into the table? And can we help you do this? Because we want to have students that we can help. So you're happy and we're happy. Okay. So that's what you want to do. And that's what I have for you. Do you guys have questions for me or any um, comments or questions or whatever that you have about what we're doing here? Who's still interested in learning how to make three or four or five or ten thousand dollars a month in the next year who still wants to do that we have any knees let's see if i can by the way i put my cell phone text in there in case you want to fill the form out but you want to be at the top and talk to me sooner rather than later i'm in pacific time which means i still have a little daylight oh you have oh. a little window yeah you yeah. have a little window it's six o'clock perfect yeah, time. that's right just in case okay cool Any questions? And do we have anything in the chat? I can't see the chat right now, but I might be able to. I can find out. Let's see here. Yes, and if, if anybody here wants to talk to Vic about the experimental team that we're, that we just, it's like three weeks old. And like I said, we, we build these every four or five years or so. And then we use all these principles to actually do it. If you wanna ask her about that when you connect with her, feel free and she'll tell you what you need to do to see if whether or not you'd be a good person for our team. We are focused on badass recruiting. I'm just telling you right now, we really, I have been a recruiter since birth. And while I am known probably more for being the customer queen, according to all the write-ups about my stuff, um, I have become a customer queen because in order to recruit, the best recruiters are missionaries who will die for the cause. And you don't, I don't want a mercenary. I want missionaries. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, hey, Leslie, why don't you connect with Vic? 
you know, there, there we might have something for you, babe. I, I have always liked what you do and who you are. And so that might be something for you to, for you to talk about. But in terms of being a badass recruiter, you know, the, the, the best missionaries are the ones who believe the most that what they have will truly help the next person. The mercenaries go where they get paid the most. So that's why in the beginning, uh, we always used to tell people, we have people who say, oh, I could really, I'm a badass recruiter. So really, yeah, but I don't even need to have the product in order to, to be on your team. And we would always tell them that you can't be on our team. You have to be a lover first. Why? Because when you love it, you'll die for it. You'll stand your ground. You won't be a doomed fly. Before you die, you're going to go, crap, what does she say? This isn't working. What should I do? Look the other way. And there is the door with the air. It must open and freedom is there. The new way to do it, the other way to do it. That's what happens to everyone who makes the world a better place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just let um, connect with uh, Vic Russell. Okay. Any questions, issues? Wonder about this and wonder about that. And hopefully, Penny, you got your person going. Window, yeah, really. Yeah, feel free to connect with Vic and fill out that form. Because if you don't stop what you're doing, you are not gonna get a different result. And if you pause and just kind of take an assessment of where you are and what you wanna do, whether you end up working with us or not, it'll help you get off the doom fly window. So that's what it's gonna do for you. That's what I recommend that I hope that you do that. Okay. All right, you guys, I think we're good to go. I don't see any questions here. You have the link. We good. And Leslie, I'm here right now. In case you want to text me right now, I can, I can, I can chat can with connect. you. Yeah. You see, do you have any other comments, Vic, you wanted to add to this? Oh, that's that's it so far. I'm I just really love your doomed fly story, Kim. It reminds me of the network marketing industry <laughs> because <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you guys want to find the window, there's another way. <laughs> there really is another way. So thank you for that. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay, good. Well, I am set. If you're set, we will call it a day. And thanks you guys for coming. And we'll see you around next time then, huh? Bye, everybody. No more doom fly. No right. more doom Good. fly. Let's, let's right. finish that off. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Oh, and for the podcast, it's maxout.com forward slash pick me, P-I-C-K-M-E. And the max out is M-A-X-R-U-T dot com forward slash pick me, P-I-C-K-M-E, all jammed together. All right.